Hey and welcome to this video. I thought I'd do a bit of a different video today. Uh, rather than a lesson, I thought I'd do a practice vlog and take you through my practice routine at the moment, uh, what I'm working on and some thoughts about practice, which for me are ever changing. Well, you know, we're not only learning the instrument, we're always learning how to practice better, hopefully. First essential thing for me when I'm practicing is tea or coffee. Uh, it's a bit later in the day now, so I'm gonna go for tea. If it was the morning, it would be black coffee. And let me show you what I think I need and the space I need to work in. So when I'm practicing, I like to have everything at hand. Other than having caffeine at hand, the other things I like to have at hand is my musical notebook. This has got musical notation and a blank page on the other side, and I just I make notes on what I'm working on there, so I can easily delve back into what I'm working on. The real book, I might use other books at certain times, but that's a pretty constant one. Uh, my pencil case just pens and pencils in case I need to make any notes. And then I'll have my laptop, just in case I need an e-book or a backing track, just so it's all at hand. And so on my pedal board, you know, I've got a looper so I can loop um, chords to practice over, I've got the freeze pedal so I can sustain the sound of a chord to practice over and then just things to sort of indulge me so for a bit of nice sounds we've got reverb and tremolo and I've got a booster and the all important boring tuner. And then behind me I've got the piano, it's not that I play piano, I play guitar, occasionally I work things out on the piano because I like the visual aspect of, of the notes in order, uh, but more often than not it's just that I use the, 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 you know, the book holder, the, the stand there to place music so that I'm not sort of looking down on the table and sort of, but, you know, looking down with my neck and causing myself problems. So, you know, important to me to always maintain good posture. Uh, when I practice and having a music book on a stand is essential in that instance. And having all that stuff at hand just means I don't procrastinate or search around for things when I practice. I've always enjoyed breaking up my practice into different sections to ensure that I'm progressing in different areas of my musicianship. Now, there's not enough hours in the day for me certainly to practice everything that I would like. Now for me, I like to work in sort of 15, 20 minute chunks. Sometimes I'll work for longer on something, but just kind of focus concentration for that sort of length of time works for me. Now I've only got about an hour and a half today to practice, so I've only got a few chunks. I'm gonna warm up, uh, do my repertoire, uh, what I call jazz language, uh, chordal, harmonize scales, and then just a, a standards check with um, some arpeggios and scales. Before I get into this, I want you to leave me a comment. What are you practicing at the moment? How do you feel about your practice? Have you made good progress this year so far? So for my warm-up, I like to uh, kill a few birds with one stone, if you like, for want of a better phrase, and I get a C7 going with this freeze. So that sustains it for me, which gives me a nice, for me, it's quite a kind of relaxing vibe you get from that sort of drone sound, I quite like it. Uh, and there's no timing, so I'm not rushing. Uh, you know, I want to warm my fingers up gradually. Sometimes I might do some stretches, certainly before gigs, but uh, not when I'm sort of, you know, practicing at home. And then I'll just find the scale. And I don't look deliberately not looking at the guitar. I don't want to put strain on my neck here. I don't want to be doing this. That's, oh, it feels horrible. And I know plenty of people that have had problems with that. I'm playing close to the fret so I can feel my fingers against the fret so I know where I am on the guitar. The right hand, really tension free, loose grip of the plectrum. The left hand is doing minimal pressure on the fretboard, just enough to get the notes to come out clearly. Not working any harder than it need be. That's just gonna be carrying unnecessary tension in this hand. So I play the scale slowly up and down. Could stage it. I'm always, always thinking in my head of what the next note will sound like. I'm not just playing let my fingers around the show, I've got it all up in here too, the sound and, and the notes. And then I go after what I can find in there. Now my fingers are starting to warm up a little bit. I'm gonna find triads. Thank you. 
well. Things I've, I've come up with myself, plus also from other things I've learned from. You know, um, there's a YouTube channel I really like, uh, things I've learned from Barry Harris, guy Chris, who he's been doing some of this kind of stuff, and it's, I've combined it with some of my own ideas and things I've been working on too. Um, so that's, that's my typical sort of warm up of what I do. have to remind myself to play slowly. I was going a little bit quicker than I'd like there. Build things up gradually, try and use all four fingers, tension free in both hands. Good posture, notice I'm slouching there. And the posture like I play at a gig so that it doesn't feel any different when I'm trying to pull all these things out. But that warm up did things for both hands and it did things for, for my, my ear and my mentally sort of organization of harmonic material. So killed, you know, a few different areas of musical elements there covered. After I've warmed up, I like to get into repertoire. So repertoire for me breaks down into two things. Repertoire maintenance, so that's um, remembering things I've known for a long time, making sure they're still there. And then it's working on new songs. Maybe they're not new songs to me now, but they're, they're just in my practice routine and I'm trying to retain both the, the chords and working on playing over them. So the one I'm working on at the minute is All The Things You Are, because in the one band I play in, we are currently uh, doing that. So I'll put the chart on the screen. So it will vary what I'm working on in terms of repertoire. It might be I'm working on learning the melody, uh, working on a chord melody of it, working on comping, working on soloing. The minute I'm trying to really work on how to finish this tune off uh, with some arranged bits and with some other bits I want to be a bit more fluent with. So I'm on the last A sort of. <laughs> So some bits there I'll be working on, you know, uh, say different ways to navigate those changes and then some of it, you know, I'll be working on like that end, which I've worked out, I just want to retain it, you know. Uh, And typically, for me, working on repertoire means focusing on small sections of the song, getting to grips with a small part of it, you know, uh, rather than playing with the whole thing. I will obviously work towards that, but there I'm just working on the end. And that's very specific. It means the next day I pick up my guitar and play, I'll go back to the end. I'm not like, oh, what should I do with it today? I'm like, no, I need to get that end stronger. So hopefully I'll get used to more of those fingerings and I'll maybe find some, you know, variations. I don't want to play it the same way every time, apart from that end bit, because I'm playing that with another musician in the band. They're gonna go. With me, that's a little thing I put on the end. And it's always nice to top and tail pieces when you're arranging them for a band. Uh, that's a 20 minute chunk and probably I've finished my tea and I'll make another cup of tea, which, you know, it might seem a bit crazy to practice for 20 minutes and stop practicing straight away, but I kind of like the processing and just let things settle with that and then make a cup of tea and get on to the next 20 minutes. My next section at the minute is 
what I call like jazz language, which I'll learn from either transcribing or looking at transcriptions of, of solos and either picking out bits I like, maybe playing full solos, but not with the point of trying to, you know, be able to perform them. It's more just, okay, so what did Charlie Christian do? What did Django do? And in this instance, what did Dizzy Gillespie do? And I'm looking at his solo on Night in Tunisia in 1946, just got the music in front of me. <laughs> doing is you know by doing this I'll be thinking oh what chords are you playing over there that, that breaks on, on the F that really simple one da, 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 da. but nice starting on the third I'll think about it harmonically third five three third five four three two or nine one you can move that Starts on the end, one, two, three, four, one. And he's got this. Um, uh, sorry. Trying to make it, you know, get all the nuances for trumpet players hard. I like studying trumpet players though, or saxophonists even, because they, they phrase very differently to us guitarists. Um, so you can pick up some nice things. The line I liked in that was that's over the E flat. This is over the D minor. So that's root flat seven root. Then over the D minor, that's a nine six. going through this the rest of this today and I'll be trying to add to what I already know of this solo and I'll be thinking all the while what could I take from this harmonically uh, phrasing you know the way he's approaching playing over those chords next thing I'm working on at the minute next sort of 20 minutes I'd work on is uh, my Barry Harris stuff them the next thing I'm working on at the minute is harmonized chords a la Barry Harris so I get a C going here and then I like to just run through the different scales I could use over C that I'm working on at the minute like chord scales is, is work on how to play the chords of a song in a slightly different way so I'm taking all the things you are instead of going so you just take the first four bars and I could be like right what can I do instead so different way 
phrase, and I'll play out of time because I'm just trying to explore the ideas. I'm really trying not to do this as well, but you know, it's hard, you have to really remind yourself. And my final bit for today is I'm going to pick a standard I've been working on over the last year. One I've got behind me is Afternoon in Paris. And I could, uh, you know, I could work on the melody, but I feel feeling okay with that. So I'm just going to unpack the first few bars. Again, work on some more sections of it. Just the, just that opening line, just to remind myself of the chords now. Yeah. So we've got C major. Five to B flat major, then a two five in A flat major. So what I might do is think about oh, okay, think about the scales I can use, or chord tones. Uh, and I'll be just sort of trying to hear ideas and, and play them over the top. Um, keep you know, just working on that small section. Sometimes with backing, sometimes without, sometimes really slowly. Sometimes just mapping out the chord tone. So C, C minor, F7, put the flat nine in, B flat major seven, uh, B two five, B flat minor, E flat. You know, just trying to navigate different ways. And I just run. You know, one thing I do is just practice is running the scales of it. Maybe try and work an idea through. Two, two, three, four. Uh, bit boring, but you know, <laughs> don't always come up with good stuff, do we? Uh, but just trying to work an idea through it. But you know, take a standard and just try and focus on playing over the the chord changes of just a, a small bit of it, working with scales maybe arpeggios, some of the things, you know, I show you guys, my practice will forever change and evolve, and but I, some things remain the same. I'll always work on repertoire, I'll, I'll always be maintaining technique, I'll always be trying to hear more and develop my ear and internalize more. And, and you know, some of the stuff we have to practice, it can be hard to know what, what things are actually gonna make a difference, what things are gonna help me make progress. And I think that's a really hard question because I think with the language of jazz, you have to internalize things. You have to play things to the point when you don't think about them. And that kind of practice is hard work. You have to do things sometimes for so long before, say, a mixed Lydian scale becomes, you know, just right under your fingers. You know it, you don't think about it. You know what it sounds like. You know what you can grab from it. And you know what you can do with it and when to apply it. It's a lot of work just to do that with, with one scale. I think if I was picking out things that I think, you know, are really important, having a solid technique you know, it's technique facilitates what you can play. So if you don't have a solid technique, you, that's essential in your practice routine. And, you know, no matter what level you're playing at, you need to maintain that technique. You know, if I don't practice for a few weeks and I go off and do a gig, I might be fresh with ideas, but cool, I feel ropey with my right hand and sort of, you know, executing things which I can normally do with ease. So maintaining and, and, and having a good technique is essential to build up. But and the next most important thing is, is a good ear. So trying to work, expand on what you can hear and, and find on your instrument in terms of the phrases you can pull out when you're improvising. And repertoire will always be a solid part of my practice routine because let's face it, we, we play an instrument to play songs and when we're playing jazz, that's jazz standards. And I'll be working on these standards for the rest of my life. You know, that all the afternoon in Paris, all the things you are that I've been looking at today, Night in Tunisia, their songs, are, some of them I've played for years. Night in Tunisia I've been playing for over 10 years and I still love it as much as the first day I learned it. I'm still working on how to navigate the changes and I still will be in 10 years time because I'll learn more, I'll hear more, I'll have refined the way I play in terms of phrasing or the notes I'm going after or you know the musicians I've, I've studied and, and learned from. You can't avoid it, it's practicing jazz, it's, it's hard work. But for me it doesn't feel like hard work. 
it's a lifelong thing and I'm just happy chipping away at it each day and happy with the little, you know, small improvements I make. And that's, you know, when you've been playing an instrument a long time, that's what you make. You don't make massive improvements. You don't make the big improvements that you did when you first learned to do a decent bend on the guitar or you can change between C and D really well and or you can, you know, strum and sing at the same time. Those, you know, those things, they're really instant gratifying, you know, like, wow, I can do that. Jazz guitar, you're working on many different elements and there's a lot of things that have to come together in order for you to feel fluent and competent at it. And I, I personally feel that if you ask most jazz musicians, they still feel like a learner, they still, and you still want that approach, that kind of mentality. Uh, Adam Neely nailed it in one of his videos for me when he said, the mentality you want when approaching playing an instrument is what if. What if I do this? What if I move that note? What if I come in here? What if I move that up? What if I go down a semitone? You know, that sort of mentality. And uh, I think it's really important to have a positive mental attitude and take the pressure off yourself. Practice the things which are gonna make a difference, as I said a minute ago. Practice smartly, practice efficiently. Continually refine how you're practicing and ask yourself, do I need to do this differently? Do I need to move away from this? Try not to pick material which is too difficult. Try to pick things which you just got like maybe 15 to 10% things you're unfamiliar with rather than, you know, it's all really difficult. And these are things I need to remind myself of. I'm trying to learn this on the piano at minutes from Debussy and uh, work my lockdown anthem thing I've been working on. This is a piece called Arabesque. It's here at Sounds. I never play piano on my YouTube, so let's, let's see how this goes. Fun. I love playing piano as a break from guitar to be honest. If you feel like you're just practicing exercises then you know you need to think how can you take this into the realm of musicality. There's always ways to be creative with your practice. Having goals is good like you know for me I'm very clear always clear about the repertoire I'm working on like at the minute it's you know all the things you are afternoon in Paris and night Tunisia. Um, very clear about that so that I don't just go from tune to tune and not make progress with any of them. Uh, but yeah, I'm very specific about what I'm working on, but I'm very flexible with how I practice it. And I think it's important to, to be like that. Reflect on your practice. You know, after this, I'm gonna go for a, a walk and I'm gonna think about, you know, what I've been working on today. Question whether I should keep playing piano if it's not just a distraction from playing guitar. Let, if you play a second instrument, let me know. Do you, do you find it difficult to keep practice up with both? So that was my practice session and let me know your comments, your thoughts on it. And uh, it's ever evolving, as I say, and you know, I think it's so important to get in the right headspace when I practice and I'm always trying to get into this sort of detached concentration. I'm not playing things passively, I'm very actively there, but I'm, I'm saying I'm trying to push things into sort of my unconscious. So, you know, it's always the things I'm trying to do. And some things, they won't be ready to be pushed there. Some things are at different stages with that. Uh, I'm planning my videos towards the end of the year and I think my last few videos of this year and the first few of next year will be all about practice. Um, and I want to go through, you know, reviewing your practice and sort of setting up a practice routine. Uh, possibly looking at the idea of setting up a Facebook group for you guys that follow my channel, where it could be somewhere you guys post videos of yourself playing um, to get feedback from others, or as a place to share ideas or sort of uh, build a bit more of a community around the people that, that follow my channel. Anyway, hope your practice is going well. I need to go out and get some fresh air. I have been making videos and practicing now for about 10 hours, so uh, I need fresh air and another cup of tea. See you again soon.